Father in heaven, we thank you so much for a beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you so much for bringing us through another week, for your love and your care upon us, that we made it through another week to another beautiful Holy Sabbath day to spend with you, to study your word, to draw closer to you through your word. Father, as we prepare to study another lesson on the USA and Bible prophecy, we ask that you will prepare our hearts and minds to receive what you have to teach us today. Help us to be attentive to this lesson study that you will bring forth to us today. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. It is June 22nd, 2024. This is Pastor Vince, and welcome to another edition of Eyes on Prophecy. We are in our lesson study called the USA and Bible Prophecy. Today is part three of our lesson series, and we're just making our way through this lesson series. We are unpacking the role of the United States of America in these last days concerning Bible prophecy. If you've been studying with us for the past uh, couple weeks or so as we've been unpacking this lesson, I hope you've been learning a lot. Uh, maybe you've heard or learned some things that you didn't know before about our wonderful country. It is our wonderful country that has its flaws. You know, it has its flaws. I mean, no country is perfect, but we live in a land where we're free to pretty much do I don't want to say everything we want to do, um, almost everything we want to do as far as a religious liberty. Um, I mean, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say we have more religious liberty, more religious freedom than any other country in the world. So when it comes to religious matters, yeah, we have more freedom than many or most other countries in the world. But friends, guess what? As we may have been learning through this lesson, we are beginning to see that those religious freedoms that we once had are starting to uh, dwindle. They're starting to fall by the wayside. And as we proceed through these last days in Earth's history, the freedoms that we once had, we will no longer have. So if this is your first time joining us, for Eyes on Prophecy, especially during this lesson study called the USA in Bible Prophecy. I welcome you to this lesson study. You're going to hear some things that you've never heard before, some things that may be shocking to you. But if you've been following all along, then you're starting to see more and more how things are starting to change, how the climate, if you will, how the climate how the quote-unquote climate is changing rapidly here in our wonderful country called the U.S. of A. So let's go ahead and get right into our lesson study. I've already prayed to start our meeting today. That's something I said I was going to start doing. I was going to start praying at the very beginning of our meeting, and then we can just go right into our lesson study. All right, so if you've got your Bible with you, I ask you to have your Bible next to you somewhere, because as always, we're going to be going through numerous Bible verses, and we may not read each and every Bible verse, but at least you've got your Bible next to you. You can open up your Bible really quick, or you've got some, some paper, you know, a pencil or pen, to, you know, just to jot down these verses, and you can go back later and look them up in your Bible. But let's go ahead and look at what we're going to study today. Um, I'm not going to do a review of what we studied before. I have been doing that. Usually I'll give like a little a review, you know, just a quick overview of what we've already covered. But friend, hey, guess what? You can go back and listen to our previous episodes on this particular lesson study. Today is part three. You can go back, listen to part one and part two, and you can get yourself caught up and, uh, you know, you'll be where we are today. But well, we're going to go ahead and get into part three. We have a lot to cover today. Um, our meetings are usually about 30 minutes long, you know, roughly 30 minutes long. 
uh, if you include my introductions and things of that nature. But the actual uh, content that we're going to cover today, uh, today, the actual lesson material that we're going to cover today, yeah, we want to get as much covered as possible. So we're looking at this next question in our lesson. And by the way, if you've never been with us before, um, our studies are formed as a question and answer. We look at a particular question, we answer the question with the help of the Bible. I'm also going to mention once again that we are using the Amazing Facts Study Guides. This particular Amazing Facts Study Guide is called the USA in Bible Prophecy. Uh, this is lesson guide or study guide number 21. We started our prophecy series when we started with uh, who is the Antichrist way back. We went through who is the Antichrist, which was number 15. And we are currently at number 21. After we finish this lesson study, we have about six more lessons to go through in this Bible prophecy lesson series. So our question for today reads this way. Again, we're unpacking uh, uh, the United States and the role that the United States of America will continue to play in these last days of Earth's history concerning Bible prophecy. What specifically will the United States do that will cause it to speak as a dragon? That will cause it to speak as a dragon. Again, we're using the Bible uh, as our foundation. So when you hear words such as dragon, beast, things of that nature, these are coming from the Bible. All right. So what specifically will the United States do that will cause it to speak as a dragon? And there are several parts to this answer. So let's just run them down. A, starting at number A. I'm sorry, starting at letter A, not number A. Starting at letter A. The Bible says in Revelation 13 and 12, exercises all the authority of the first beast. So the first uh, point is exercises all the authority of the first beast. And again, that's, uh, that's according to Revelation 13 and 12. The United States will become a persecuting power that will force people to go against their conscience, as did papal Rome, which is portrayed in the first half of Revelation chapter 13. So you're going to want to, at some point, read through the entirety of Revelation chapter 13. But right now we're just breaking it down verse by verse, or we're looking at specific verses to answer our uh, question right now. So the first one exercises all the authority of the beast from Revelation 13 and 12. Again, the United States will become a persecuting power that will force people to go against their conscience, as did papal Rome, which is portrayed in the first half of Revelation chapter 13. B, causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That comes from Revelation 13 and 12 once again. Explanation. The United States will lead the nations of the world in forcing, in forcing allegiance to the papal antichrist. The issue is always worship. Who will you worship and obey? Will it be Christ, your creator and redeemer, or Antichrist. I've said this before, that friend, at the end of the day, this battle, this conflict, this spiritual war, this great controversy is about worship. If we go back to the account in the Bible, Satan says, I will, I will be like the most high. We know that uh, there was war in heaven. If you read the book, The Great Controversy by Ellen G. White, and I hope you pick that book up. It's a wonderful book because it really breaks down this controversy, this spiritual war, this battle, this conflict that we're talking about. There was war in heaven. Satan, who was then Lucifer, wanted the worship that only belonged to God. We know that he took a third of the angels with him when he was kicked out of heaven to earth. And it's still about worship. Uh, the way uh, Lucifer, who is now Satan, the way Satan works through uh, people, works through systems, works through governments, etc., 
he is working to carry out his agenda, which is to get the worship that only belongs to the one true God. So once we are aware that it's about worship, we uh, prayerfully will not allow Satan to have control over our lives, to cause us to say and do things that are not pleasing to God, things that will uh, cause us to be separated from God. We know about, you know, the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, the serpent, you know, it was actually Satan speaking through the serpent. We know the whole account. That's how sin entered the world. But the uh, direct communication or the, or the direct communion that man once had was gone once sin entered the world. So again, it's about worship. Satan is trying to separate us from God in different ways by causing us to say and do things that are displeasing to him. But because of the plan of salvation, God wants to redeem us, restore us, recreate us back into his original image, which is that image of sinlessness, holiness, and righteousness that was in place in the Garden of Eden uh, before sin entered the world. So again, the issue is always worship. Who will you worship and obey? Will it be Christ, your creator and redeemer, or antichrist? Every soul on earth will finally worship one or the other. Satan's approach will appear to be deeply spiritual, and incredible miracles will be seen. You can read about that in Revelation 13, verses 13 and 14, which will deceive millions. That's Revelation 13 and 3. Those who refuse to join this movement will be considered uh, divisive or divisive, stubborn, radical, and unpatriotic. Jesus labeled Protestant America of the end time a, quote, false prophet. Read Revelation 19, verses 20, or verse 20, Revelation 19, verse 20, and then Revelation 20, verse 10. Because it will appear spiritual and uh, trustworthy, but instead will be satanic in its conduct. All this may seem impossible, but Jesus' words are always reliable and true, according to uh, Titus 1 and 2. He foretold the rise and fall of the four world empires and the Antichrist, according to uh, Daniel chapters 2 and 7, at a time when such predictions seemed outlandish and incredible. But all came to pass precisely as predicted. His warning to us today regarding prophecy is this, quote, I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe, end quote. That's John 14 and 29. So the two uh, points we looked at so far uh, regarding the question, what specifically would the United States do that will cause it to speak as a, as a dragon? Exercises all the authority of the first beast and uh, causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. C, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. That's Revelation 13, verse 14. The United States will make an image to the beast by legislating religious practice. Seems impossible, right? Well... It will pass laws requiring worship and force people to either obey them or face death. This action is a copy or image of the church-state form of government the papacy ruled with at the height of the power of her power during the Middle Ages, when millions were slain for her faith, for their faith, when millions were slain for their faith. The United States will combine civil government and prostate and and not prostate, excuse me, and apostate Protestantism in a marriage that will support the papacy. I'll read that again. The United States will combine civil government and apostate Protestantism in a marriage that will support the papacy. It will then influence all the nations of the world to follow her example. Thus, the papacy will gain 
worldwide support. So friend, you're probably listening to me like, wow, can this really be? Is this something that could really happen? Well, the Bible's telling us that it's going to happen. I mean, we may not believe what another man may tell us. You may not, you know, you may not believe what I'm telling you. If you look at it from that perspective, if you look at me, if you look at it as me as a human being, which I am a human being, but you're saying, hey, you know, he's just a human being. He's just saying these things. I'm saying this based on what the Bible's telling us, based on what God is telling us in his word. And what I've been sharing with you comes from so far the book of Revelation, a book that many people don't even want to open. Oh, it's a sealed book. It's so difficult to understand. Um, blah, 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 blah. Friend, God wants us to know these things in his word. God wants to reveal these things to us in his word. So a revelation, the word in itself means to unveil or to reveal. So how can anyone feel that the book of Revelation is a closed book or it's a sealed book? You know, we're not to know these things. No. So, yeah, these things are possible and they will happen. They will happen. So see again, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. D. And cause as many as would worship the image of the beast to be killed. Revelation 13, verse 15. The United States, as head of this international movement, will next influence the nations of the world to impose a death, a death sentence upon all who refuse to worship the beast or his image. Now, another name for this worldwide coalition is Babylon the Great. And we're going to get more into uh, Babylon the Great in our next lesson series after this one, which is called The Other Woman. So right now, as we know, we're in the USA in Bible Prophecy. The lesson study that we'll go through after this one is called The Other Woman, which is study guide number 22. And that's when we'll uh, uh, that's where we get more into this uh, Babylon the Great. This worldwide alliance will, in the name of Christ, substitute the policeman's power for the Holy Spirit's gentle persuasion and it will force worship and it will force worship I want you to underscore that statement and it will force worship I told you already that this battle this spiritual battle spiritual war whatever you want to call it is about worship I, I've already explained what that you know what that's about I told you that Satan is working through agencies uh, governments uh, people, etc., to carry out his agenda. So Satan, essentially, Satan is going to uh, continue working through um, uh, the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, specifically the papacy leadership, um, as I just read to you, um, in the name of Christ, substitute the policeman's power for the Holy Spirit's uh, uh, gentle persuasion, because worship is going to be forced in this land it's going to be forced but you say well i'm already worshiping god so if i'm forced to worship god i don't understand how that's going to affect me negatively well those who stand on the side of christ to worship and I, i'll just keep repeating it i've been saying it all along it's about worship it's about worshiping god on sunday versus God's true Sabbath, which is Saturday. I've explained in past episodes uh, um, um, about God's mark or seal of authority. I explained that the Sabbath is God's mark or sign or symbol of his authority, of him as creator. God's true biblical Sabbath is Saturday. I explained that when we were going through the Mark of the Beast lesson series. Satan is working, again, through governments, agencies, people, the papacy, etc., to carry out his agenda to force worship on Sunday, his counterfeit Sabbath. Satan always has a counterfeit, always has a counterfeit to what God has in place. 
God's word says, God says through his word that the true Sabbath day is Saturday. Satan has his counterfeit, which says that Sunday is the Sabbath. That Sunday should be elevated above Saturday as God's holy day. So my point here is that worship will be forced. Worship, essentially for Satan, if you want to just be, you know, you know, if I just, you know, if I could just be blunt with it, worshiping Satan and his agenda, that's what it's about. Satan will work through individuals to force worship. Worship for him. Worship to him, not worship to the one true God. We talked about, uh, you know, the mark. Again, when we, well, when we were going through the Mark of the Beast lesson series, we talked about, you know, the chip. Well, I mean, I mentioned that many people believe it's a little chip in your hand and so forth. But when we talk about the mark, what the mark really means, it has to do with consciousness. Um, you know, uh, we could have the mark in our forehead because the forehead, which is the frontal lobe, and I'm, you know, just kind of just, uh, you know, just reiterating what I've already explained already. The forehead or the frontal lobe is where we make our decisions. So in a nutshell, those who have received the mark in their forehead, it really means that they have made a decision to worship against God's true Sabbath day. In other words, they will deem Sunday as holy. They will worship on Sunday as God's holy day versus Saturday. And then the mark in their hand means that they will work. So right, right, so they've decided to choose Sunday over Saturday, okay? And then in their hand, they will work on God's holy Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Because remember, they have chosen to elevate Sunday as God's holy day, the day that they're not going to work or, you know, other things. So guess what? They're going to do it on Saturday in opposition to it being God's true holy Sabbath day, the day that we should not work and things of that nature. So you get it? All right. So in a nutshell, worship is going to be is going to be uh, forced. Satan is going to work through human agencies to force uh, people who have not chosen to stand on the side of Christ, force people to worship him instead of the one true God. So those are the points that I wanted to cover. Um, points A through D, answering the question, what specifically will the United States do that will cause it to speak as a dragon? We said that A, it exercises all the authority of the first beast. Read Revelation 13, 12. B, causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That's Revelation 13 and 12. C, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. That's Revelation 13, verse 14 and D. And cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Revelation 13, verse 15. Friend, we have run out of time already. Wow, time just gets away from us. I try not to speak too much in the beginning. I mean, I always want to have some type of introduction. Of course, I want to always start our meetings with prayer. I want to have a little introduction. But, you know, once we get into the actual material, I just look at the time and time is about to get away from us. So I'm going to stop there, friend. I thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me for this week's edition of Eyes on Prophecy. This has been part three of our lesson series called The USA in Bible Prophecy. Uh, by God's grace, we're going to pick up next Sabbath for part four of our study on the USA in Bible Prophecy. And while I have a minute or two, I just want to let you know that, well, if you are a Facebook person, I don't know if you are. I'm finding many more people are becoming more displeased with Facebook. They're leaving Facebook. They're, they're sick of Facebook for different reasons, whatever. But Facebook is one of the tools that God has given us to reach souls. So 
I'm going to say if it wasn't for this ministry, I would not be on Facebook as much as I am. But God has given it to us, I believe, as a tool to reach souls. So we're trying to reach as many people as we can through Facebook and other social media and, you know, through this podcast, etc. So what I'm saying is, if you are a Facebook person, I'm asking you to check out the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast on Facebook. We have a Facebook page and we just created a new uh, public group. So I'm going to speak about the public group. I'm going to promote the public group right now. I'm going to focus on our new public group on Facebook. It's called SDA Teaching, Preaching, Praise and Worship global community. Let me say that again, because I had, because I almost forgot. (laughs) SDA teaching, preaching, praise and worship, global community. Just search that on Facebook. It's, it's our public group. It's open to the entire world. If you are a Seventh-day Adventist believer, if you are a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and you're listening to my voice right now, I invite you to join us in that public group on Facebook. Once again, it's called SDA Teaching, Preaching, Praise and Worship, Global Community. I know, you know, uh, that might be kind of long, whatever, but (laughs) it makes a point. Um, So please join us in that public group on Facebook, all right? But otherwise, friend, have a great Sabbath. I'm looking out the window right now. It's a beautiful sunny day here in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Um, I don't know how it is where you are, but thank you for joining me, for listening. This is Pastor Vince, and we're going to come back by God's grace next Sabbath for another edition of Eyes on Prophecy. Have a great week ahead and be blessed.